Hello my friends, today we're gonna make a frickin' powerful future bounce drop similar to Dirty Palm in FL Studio 20. Let's start by making some vibey chords. Now let's copy and paste the chords to make a second part or a part B. We're gonna change the last chord from this to this in the B part. So the A part will just be the normal chords. And the B part will have this different chord. It kinda gives that nostalgic vibe. Changing up the last chord at some points in the song can go a long way in making the song more interesting. It makes you feel like you're on a journey. Now let's make a melody on top. Now my guys and gals, let's start on building the drop. We'll begin by making a huge lead, because that's definitely the main focus of a Dirty Palm style drop. I'm gonna start with the serum lead layer from my new sample pack, playing the lead melody. Now we'll add just a few more layers to make the lead sound a bit more full. We don't need to add too many layers, because a lot of the power will come from the mixing effects we'll add on the lead. We'll instead just add enough layers to get the lead to sound a bit more colorful. Guys before we mix the lead I'm gonna show you a few tricks I use to make the lead a lot bigger and more exciting. The first thing I did was just to add a very short reverb with a very short decay time. And I added this reverb automation to stop the reverb between the lead notes just a couple times in the melody. This makes the lead sound a bit more controlled. After that I added a normal reverb on top with a much longer decay time. And I added a reverb automation for the long reverb. As you can see, the long reverb is just the basic reverb you would expect for a future bounce drop with a reverb automation that goes up after a note. So the first reverb is just an extra little trick to give some extra space to the lead, which makes it bigger. The next trick we're gonna use is to add a pitch automation for the lead layers, but not just a basic boring pitch automation. I made this curve in the automation to create this cool LFO sound. I just made the shape. It just adds a bit more emotion to the lead. Alright, the next trick is to make the lead pan slightly from left to right, which makes the lead feel a bit more alive. I did that with this plugin called Pancake, which is a totally free plugin. Now onto the fun part, guys. We're gonna mix the lead and make it a hell of a lot more powerful. It sounds nice now, but we want it to really be in your face. We'll start by adding quite a bit of compression with OTT to really push the lead. Then we'll add an EQ to clean up the lead just a bit. Then we'll add compression and distortion using Camel Crusher. Then another EQ to clean it up a bit more. Some more distortion with Fruity Fast Disc EQ. Then a Sanjadizer to add some more power. And a final EQ to clean up the lead just a bit more. Lastly, I added a Fruity Stereo Shaper with just a bit of stereo delay to make the lead a bit wider in the mix. This my friends is what the lead sounded like before the mixing. And this is after we added the mixing effects. That's a bit more power I would say. We're also gonna add a white noise layer on top. Playing the lead melody just to add a bit more energy to the lead. Lastly, to make the drop a bit more interesting, we're gonna add some lead harmonies for the second half of the drop. I just added a new serum layer, playing this harmony melody. Now my lovely people, we're gonna make a really fat and crisp bass line on top of the lead. We're gonna start with this serum layer playing this bass line. Then we're gonna add some more bass layers to make the bass more powerful. The last layer we're gonna add will be a sub bass layer. To make the bass sound nicer, we're gonna add a pitch automation for the bass layers.
It just makes the bass line a bit cooler you know. Now guys let's add some mixing effects to make the bass more powerful. We'll begin by mixing the mid bass layers. I started by adding an EQ removing a lot of the highs and high mids because the lead takes up a lot of these frequencies. Then I added compression with OTT. Another EQ. Some more compression and distortion using Camel Crusher. EQ. A soundizer to add some more power. And lastly I added 3 more EQs to really clean up the high frequencies in the bass. This is what the mid bass sounds like without the mixing effect. And this is with. Now guys, let's quickly mix the sub bass layer. We're gonna take it from this. To this. To achieve that we'll add EQ, compression and distortion with Camel Crusher, another EQ, a soundizer, and two final EQs. This is what the full bass line sounds like guys. To make the bass bigger, we are actually gonna add a second bass line on top. The second bass line consists of these two stab layers from Serum. Playing just these stab notes. And to make the stab bass more crisp I added these mixing effects. This is what the stab bass sounds like with the mixing. To add even more power to the bass we're gonna add a long drop clap, playing the same rhythm as the bass line. This is what the bass sounds like without the drop clap layer. And this is with the drop clap on top. As you can hear it actually adds quite a bit more energy to the bass. To make the bass a bit more exciting I added this bass house and fill. This is what we have so far guys. Now let's add some warm and nice chords on top to add some more emotion and energy to the drop. But first, I would truly appreciate it if you subscribed and turned on post notifications. Okay guys, I started by using this serum preset playing these chords. Then I added a couple more layers to fill out the chords. When we're gonna mix the chords we of course want to make them more powerful, but we also want them to have a kind of filtered vibe. You know the lead is very bright sounding and takes up a lot of the high end frequencies, but we want the chords to instead have a lot of power in the high mids and mids. We're gonna start by distorting the chords with a fruity fast dist, then we're gonna add an EQ to clean up the sound, then a lot of compression with OTT, another EQ, a soundizer to add more punch, some distortion and compression using Camel Crusher, EQ to clean up some harsh frequencies created by the other plugins, then I added a fruity phaser with the default settings, and I turned the effect down to about 25%, and then a final EQ to add some finishing touches. Lastly I added a fruity stereo shaper to make the chords really wide in the mix. This my friends is what the chords sound like without the mixing effect. And this is with. And this is what the chords sound like together with the bass line. As you can hear, they add a bit more emotion to the drop. To add even more emotion on top of that, I added some harmony chords on top. The harmony chords consist of a distorted saw layer and serum. Playing these harmonies. While being controlled by this cutoff automation. The point of the harmony chords is to give a bit more support to the main chords, which makes them a bit more emotional. Now guys let's quickly make a really powerful drum beat that complements the rest of the drop. We wanna try to make a beat that really gives power to all the elements that we've created this far. We're gonna begin by adding a kick, some drop claps, a ride, and a pre-shift clap. Then we're gonna add some percussion sounds to make some notes in the bass line and chords hit harder. We want the percussion to really highlight the rhythm of the drop.
After that we're gonna add a growl since fill. And lastly some impacts to add some energy. Finally I was done with the drop guys. Before I show you the full drop, I would truly appreciate it if you checked out my new sample pack. Link is in the description. If you get the pack you'll get 6 FLPs, 280 samples, and 150 serum presets. All made for future house, bass house, slap house, and deep house. Here's a sneak peek of two of the FLPs from the pack. Link is in the description. If you liked the video please be sure to subscribe. Thanks so much for watching. Love you guys.